Hey folks, I'm Mike. A few days ago, it was announced that Tyler Brennan had invested in Rotoriot buying half of the company. I put up a reaction video which actually gained quite a bit of attention. And as part of that attention, Chad Capper himself saw it and actually kind of funny, uh, uh, someone else and I were talking about whether Chad, this was part of Chad's exit strategy. And Chad slid right on into the comments and said, well, how about you guys ask me directly? I'll be willing to answer. So I opened up Messenger and asked Chad if he'd be willing to do an interview. And Chad said yes. And so what you're seeing now is an excerpt from that interview. We talked for over two hours uh, and he was very generous with his time. It was late at night and I am very appreciative that Chad was able to give me this look into the Rotoriot business and the Rotoriot history and even really to a great degree the history of multi-rotors in general. Now this is an excerpt from the middle of our conversation and I plan on posting other pieces of it later but this was the part that is most pertinent to what is going on now which is that you know Rotor Riot has been invested in and quite interestingly enough I'm able to ask the question that's on everybody's mind did you run out of money well if you want to hear the answer to that you gotta watch Chad talk to you guys soon bye you that that uh, that brings me to uh, your post on the Rotor Riot page. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I know we've been going on for a long time, so um, I, I'm I'm happy to keep keep powering right through. But you know, yeah, if you I have think a hard you're. Stop, I think you're going to have a couple of episodes here. But yeah, yeah, yeah just, there's a whole <laughs> lot here. Um, you mentioned that, that that you know you guys hit a and this is your term a mm -hmm. hard time. Yeah. And Tyler helped you out of the hard time. Can you at all elaborate on what the hard time was? Well, we've been having a hard time for quite a while. It, it's it, it's tough because we're doing so much more on the same budget a lot of other people have. You know, so if somebody starts making motors and they have an online store, they're not bringing five people together and traveling to exotic locations and making right. videos. Like we make all of that. On, I don't know if people think like we magically get money from somewhere else or what, but it's all supported. Oh, through I, this. I, I saw, yeah, I saw your the interview with Dustin. You said that the proceeds from the store uh -huh. go to make the videos. Right. Yeah. And, but people think we have like magic YouTube money or something. Do you know what we make on YouTube? It's not even a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Like it's like I, nine. I, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. So it, and, and what's funny is back, back when I first um, started flight tests, we were making thousands of dollars a month with 50,000 subscribers. Like they just keep whittling down what they pay, you know, YouTube channels. So yeah. it's, yeah. So we make our money through our product sales. Um, and we, and we still try to be competitive on our products. Do we make premium products? Yeah. Our, our margins aren't ridiculous. You know, they're, it, they're typical margins and, you know, so it's, it's been difficult. You know, we've got, imagine if you had the actors on a movie doing all the administrative work. <laughs> like, you right. know, it, it, it's not easy. So did, the, I'm gonna, I want to ask a hard question. I think you're going to invoke the, I'm not going to answer this. Uh -huh. um, did you, I mean, did you just flat run out of money? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't answer <laughs> okay. that. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, it, you, you talk about money, people get sensitive. Oh, um, no, no. I mean, I was I was paying for stuff out of my, you know, savings account. And then eventually my, um, you know, just it, now we, we had our ups and downs, you know, so we, right. we there are times we'd we'd be in the positive times we'd be in the negative. But uh, it, it, it happened because we're we're ambitious you know we just spread ourselves thin like we we want to we want to do it all 
and uh, when you get this many creative people together, you're you, you realize you're spending more money too late, you know, and um, yeah, and with the industry too becoming more competitive, which you know we knew that was going to happen, but it's it's a lot of pieces that all have to be in sync. Like you have to make sure that you're ramping down your spending the same time your sales are ramping down, you know, same time everyone's right. are. And, yeah. you know, there's, uh, yeah. So while the, the channel keeps growing, the, you know, the sales become more and more competitive and mm -hmm. that's, that's what it is. But we've I mean, got, it, there's a, there's a hamstringing element too, in the fact that you're supporting the production off of the sales, because then, you know, under a typical model, mm -hmm. some of the profit would go right back into the store. Right. And you guys are, 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 are siphoning all or some of that off into the production. And so how does that affect the sales cycle? Well, yeah, it's, it, it, it's not, it's not bad if you just keep a handle on everything, but you know, where, where we got into trouble was we, we started developing too many products simultaneously. So okay. when you, W w the odds of a like say you're going to develop 10 products okay mm -hmm. probably half of those are going to fail or break even mm -hmm. so we were develop. i think in the past year we developed we had like 20 products you know and mm -hmm. we were just developing too many products too fast and even if they did all right it's still a timing issue. If you don't, you know, if you spend, let, let's just say you're, you're, you're testing and R and D and all of that takes you, um, you know, three months to develop. Well, mm -hmm. you're paying all your operational costs those three months. Now, if you develop it in two months, it changes the whole picture dramatically. Mm -hmm. So, but we kept taking too long to develop what we were developing. So we would start all of these different products and then the development cycle would take too long. And then about the time it was released, it was, we were hitting the curve a little late and, you know, it's just, it's, I, I don't want to paint this negative picture. Like I'm just, I'm being, no, I, it, you know, very raw I, with you that, you know, it's, yeah. it's tough to run a business and we, we we have a great not, model. It was just operationally, you know, we were suffering. Well, not not only in, and I I really would love to get your your input on this. Um, not only are you running a tough business, and not only is it getting more competitive, but what is the health of the industry? Well, okay, so yeah, I've now this is this is the area that I've. I am good at is, is seeing okay. like industry movements and, and, yeah. um, emerging technologies. And, and I you know, saw, and you know, just, I saw your hype cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and that comes from, you know, 15, 20 years of making marketing videos and, and seeing startups right. and fortune 500 companies. And every time we would make a video for them, we had to learn everything about that company and we learned about their history and their struggles. So, yeah. so, the the movement of a new industry you got to think about it it i don't i again i'm i'm very pragmatic in my thinking so it baffles me when i when people think like this do they think that something's going to emerge and it's going to do well and it's just going to go straight up like that's how people yes. think so what they do is when that comes out they build it on that initial blip and think oh that's the industry no, the initial blip is always a spike. You, you, a new product, mm -hmm. a new industry, a new technology, a new relationship. There's always an initial spike. And if you, yes, I, I watched it happen with these. Uh huh. I mean, my, my my background is is in is as a mobile engineer, uh huh, software engineer. And, okay. You know, back in 2011, man, dude, it was a rocket ship. Mm -hmm. Like. You know, the company that I worked for, we could not sell ads faster. We, we could not sell them fast enough. 
Right. And every every week we'd have an all hands and the sales guys would walk in and be like, we just closed our biggest deal ever. And then right around 2012, 2013, you know, a bunch of the rules changed in the industry. It always and, will. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everybody starts going out of business. And we almost did, too. We ended up getting acquired. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was that was my first real close up look with the hype cycle. So. Yeah. So it, it, it always happens. Like, I I mean, even when I say that, like, d- Whoever's watching this, do you really think that when something emerges and there's a, 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 a this much business that it's just going to be like that forever or even 10 years? No, it's, it's not going to be, you know, we got about a year and a half out of that first blip. And, yeah. you know, that's that's great, you know, and um, my intent was to run lean and wait it out until the industry stabilized. And, you know, a lot of people know this. It's kind of a rule of thumb that a a company needs about three years to be able to stand on its own. Mm. How old's our industry? Not three years. (laughs) Yeah. Like the industry itself isn't even barely, just barely three years at this point. Right. And I don't even know if you could legitimately call it three years old. Exactly. It is not a mature industry at all. So how can you take an industry that isn't even as old as a company and say that it's dying. No, it's, it's becoming more competitive. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's, that's what's happening is, you know, it's people when it's new, if you let a bunch of people in a room, you know, with dessert, they're going to gorge themselves. (laughs) But once, once they get sick and, you know, and they're full, they're going to slow down and then you're going to count on the new people coming in the room. Well, the room's only so big and you can only serve so many people so that you, you get this catch 22 until the industry stabilizes. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's where we're at. We're just it, the amount of people flying are increasing. You can tell by YouTube videos if you if you search for. FPV freestyle videos, you're going to see more and more uploaded every week. That means more and more people are coming in. It's just that they're not buying at the little shops. They're going to China. They're going to the bigger shops and they, people want to buy where everyone else buys race day quads. <laughs> so yeah. shameless plug. I know. I, know. I meant road riot. Road riot. <laughs> um, do you think that do you, well, I, I I know from my experience, um, you know, once mobile, I mean, mobile was was on fire. Mobile was going to eat the world, mm-hmm. and then it consolidated. Right. So are we are we are we going through the consolidation phase? Absolutely. Of, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's yeah. You're seeing it. The you know the onesie twosie kind of boutique shops are going to struggle. Um, the mm-hmm. ones that are, you know, it, quite frankly. What's interesting is, is we, I would say the Rotor Riot store was probably ranked like 10, you know, a year ago. And then mm-hmm. we, we got some of our crap together and just started running a little more efficiently and got some things ironed out. And we very quickly rose to about three or four. So it was like, you know, get FPV, race day quads, Piro flip, you know, Rotor Riot probably in that order. Um, And then, you know, we, and and part of it, a lot of people don't know this, but we were still running our operation out of the Lauren facility. So we had a partnership with them and we were moving Mm -hmm. out of there and moving out. We had, uh, we had a hang up on, on an agreement with our inventory. So we were moving so fast that we actually moved all the way to Florida and, then we weren't able to get our inventory on the terms that we thought we were. So we had to come up with a, oh. another game plan. Yeah. And um, the game plan was to, you know, pull favors and go out to all of our contacts and say, hey, can we get product on consignment so we can quickly fill our warehouse and have sales to support ourselves? And mm-hmm. um, Drew called Tyler and said, mm-hmm. hey, can we get borrow some inventory get some inventory maybe five percent over cost you know and and actually without hesitation he's like sure 
I was like, oh, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that's amazing. And so we started down that path and then Tyler calls back or something and, and he's like, are you guys looking for uh, an investor? <laughs> and mm -hmm. like, uh, why are you interested? And, and I had known Tyler for, you know, since mm -hmm. he started, um, he would check in with me, uh, you know, minimum every three to six months. And mm -hmm. he would offer, offer me, you know, Hey, I can help you out. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I, why does my competitor want to help me out? You know, like I, right. it, so I was, I was a little skeptical, but he was always, um, very straightforward and, um, you know, he always shared his admiration for the brand and just felt like if we could work together, it would just be amazing. And, and I really wanted to work with him, but because we were in the deal with Lauren that we were, um, I, my hands were tied. So, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until, you know, we, we moved away that we could seriously consider it. And by that point, we'd already known each other pretty well. And he yeah. has a, an amazing track record. I mean, how many, how many people can start their business at 22, 23 and, you know, become one of the leaders in a new space can, can while I, you're going through air force training? <laughs> can I, can I just tell you, so I posted my video and, and, you know, full disclosure, I, I use a little bit of clickbait. It's not a lot of clickbait. Uh -huh. and, and I think, I think you, I think you have to, in order to capture attention, my formula mm -hmm. is, you know, I, 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 cause number one, I'm still not at the point where the YouTube algorithm is picking me up and pushing me. Mm -hmm. So I have to push myself and I do that by posting to all the various groups. So when I posted the video that I posted last night, or God, was it last night? It feels like it was forever uh -huh. ago. Um, I posted to Rotoriot and I posted to RDQ mm -hmm. and the Rotoriot guys are like, hell yeah. Uh -huh. Right. The RDQ guys, Tyler actually had to step into the thread and defend me mm -hmm. because, because the, the RDQ folks are so fiercely loyal to him. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and I was, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, there's a certain amount of idol worship and things like that that I'm used to in this industry because, I mean, you know, who 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 of us, I mean, you, you maybe you you haven't experienced this because you're you, you built it, but who of us really has doesn't want to be a rotor riot pilot, right? Like like if yeah. Chad Capper picked up the phone and called just about anybody in the industry <laughs> and said you're the next guy, most everybody would would jump on board, but. Yeah, maybe. maybe uh, uh, no, and that's probably a, a thought that I take for granted. I don't really think about it, but that would be interesting. Just to, it, it would also be cruel to be like, no, just wanted to see if you would say yes. But, <laughs> but just, just call ra random people and see see how <laughs> they, they would be. act. But then that would be really mean, you know. <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> but man, it would make great video. <laughs> right. Just show up at their house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> I should not even go down that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, the the the, the folks in the RDQ channel. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one guy, one guy told me to piss off, and I I I really got a kick out of that because I was like, "Hey, man, I I appreciate your you have every right to get angry." Mm -hmm. um, I. I think I asked the question, like, you know, why did Tyler buy half of Rota Riot? Mm -hmm. And I answered the question this way. I said, the answer is fundamental to society. And then I post my teaser video, which it basically asks the same question in the teaser video. Right. And then I post my YouTube link. And, <laughs> you know, all these guys are firing from the hip, right? They're getting pissed off because I'm asking a question uh -huh. and none of them bothered to watch the YouTube video. Uh huh. And uh, Tyler actually had to step in and, and be kind of like, guys, Hey, settle down. Right. You, know, you should, you should probably watch the video before you comment on this gentleman's post. <laughs> Anyways, it was, it, 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 well, it was interesting. 
it, just it is, the amount of personal loyalty he commands. And and it is weird that um, <laughs> Rotor Riot has um, fiercely loyal followers, people, but they're like Trump supporters. <laughs> Like, I, I don't mean they're like Trump's. I'm saying like, it's like closet, you know, like they, they can't say it out loud because a fear of, uh, you know, it being so, so polarizing or being called a fanboy. You know, I think that's like yeah, that's every the, pilot's biggest ultimate. fear is being called a fanboy. Right. Um, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, it's definitely a weird dynamic because we, we have, very very loyal customers viewers um you know my favorite is you know chad i i love rotor riot i've watched every episode i love what you guys are doing but i buy my stuff at race day quads <laughs> you know, it's, it's like yeah, yeah. thanks yeah. yeah um you know and, and and fair enough it's because we're out of stock or you know something so uh, you hear that enough you're just like and then Tyler makes you an offer. You're like, you know, it, it, it goes that way. Anyhow, why don't we just roll with it? And you know, that's, it, it made the most sense. <laughs>